Facebook world. Your buddy Alex here. Um, this is part of the uh, my board game segment, but uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit today because there's a game I really want to talk about that I really enjoy playing with the, the crew, you know? Um, it's a card game. So uh, let's just say uh, my board games, parentheses, uh, cool card game, or of course, what card game would I pick, right? You guys know me. You see the shirt I'm wearing. Legends of Wrestling. What else could it possibly be? Except Legends of Wrestling. Created by Filsinger Games in 1987. This game has been around a long time. What, 30 years now, give or take? And um, I didn't get into it right away. I got into it really late. I heard about it. And I would see it around in stores. Eh, card game. Eh, dice rolls, whatever. But, you know, years later, as I got into I got into all the Dungeons and & Dragons and role-playing stuff kind of late. You know, I didn't really grow up on that. Like other people did. But the way it's kind of like a role-playing game. But the thing is, with Legends of Wrestling, you get a, a set roster. And you do get, you literally get Legends. You know, like even over here, I'll show you the uh, first set that came out. Maybe that box right there. I don't have the box, but look. You had the Road Warriors as a first set there, you know. And they, they release, you know, Jimmy Valiant, all right? Johnny Valiant, the Valiant Brothers, really old school teams. You know, Greg the Hammer Valentine. So you got legends, but in between the legends, you know, you would get them some lesser known talent, you know. The man right here, Nick Bogwinkle, one of my favorite cards to use. You would get lesser known guys when you play Legends of Wrestling as well as superstars, you know. Well, SD Jones, you know who that is. You know, Al Snow. I mean, we all we all know who they are. It's really, really cool. But uh, yeah, so basically Legends of Card Games played with dice. And like, I got all these cards here. I'm going to, you know, I can't show you every single thing. There's literally, and I don't have like maybe 50 cards, but there's like over 100 cards. There's, there's other expansion sets I haven't even thought about buying yet. You know, it's just... It's all right. It's, it's fine, you know. But I'll tell you, even the girls get in the action, you know. Legends Vintage, Sherry Martell, rest in peace, Sherry. The girls got in the action, and she's actually a really cool card to play with. So how do you play? So let's take um, Nick Bockwinkle and SD Jones. Now, each of these boys has stats on the back of their cards. I don't know how good the camera is. There's numbers and so forth. You roll one die, and there's level one, level two, and level three. So if you're rolling any dice, and these are these are just the dice I've had these dice forever. <laughs> so let's say if you roll like like Nick Bockwinkle, level one offense. So let's say he goes first, right? Snap man, level one. You roll the die. Now St. Jones is defending level one defense. So St. Jones rolls, let's say a three. And I don't know if, if the three says he's hurt. So uh, St. Jones is hurt, and there's a dash two pass down. So let's see if you can see that. SD Jones is hurt with a dash two. Now, since he's hurt and lost the die roll, per se, Nick Bockwinkle can go to level two offense and he can roll level two moves. Right? There's three different levels of moves you can perform as you play the game. And as you see next to the cards, there's numbers. And the level two, there's a three. Now, if he gets a move with a three and SD Jones cannot counter it, he gets to go to level three offense, Nick Bockwinkle, meaning he can hit his finisher. And if Bockwinkle's seen all the finish, if Bockwinkle has two finishers, the figure four leg lock and the Bockwinkle sleeve. So whatever he rolls, plus two, plus three. Putting SD Jones on defense and um, down, pin. So basically, uh, SD Jones cannot recover. He will get pinned. That's how it works. And these matches can go either really quick or take forever. Uh, we've had some long ones where I came to the point where I play with the, the guys and my cousins and even the girls got in on the action. You know, some of my female cousins who love wrestling still to this day. We had a time limit, maybe a 10-minute time limit or a 12-minute time limit. But, um, you know, that was just when you play for fun. That's just free mode, we'd call it. But uh, we wanted to make it more realistic, like a booker. So what we ended up doing, like I said, they released lesser known cards as well. So see, uh, with no, no disrespect to anybody, any of these wrestlers, they're all fantastic athletes. No disrespect to anybody, but we, we put Marcus Bagwell in that category. <laughs> Less or more. Right? And then we got, uh, this is actually Brody Lee. No, Like I said, no disrespect, just us playing the game. Brody Lee is actually Luke Harper right now in the WWE. And as you notice, these cards are in black and white. The cards would become in color uh, years and years later. Color cards came out eventually. So I guess you can call them, as a wrestling fan, the jobbers. Uh, those who are not familiar with wrestling, the fall guy. You know what I'm saying? 
you know, we actually, uh, we kind of put out snow in that category and Tony Atlas. So what we would do, um, me, since I'm the one who supposedly was uh, the creative one and I was the booker and it was my game and I had the ideas, I would, um, book just, uh, like, uh, kind of a role-playing thing where you have to work your way up. So we would pick the, uh, you know, lesser known, uh, cards we have here. <laughs> yeah, this right here is a good one too. You know, Coco Beware, everybody loves Coco. I love him too, you know, lesser known and even on the back here, old school Steve Carino. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you just uh, to make it more realistic, you know, you're not going to, because the way we wanted to do it, that's Steve Carino, the way we wanted to do it is give like an experience of working your way up the ranks. We basically used the, uh, and he, we, we started Jim Duggan, uh, he was sick recently, feel better hack. So we started him, you know, in that tier. Basically, we, uh, my friends and I and my family implemented the territory system. Um, about 30, 40 years ago, there was a territory system. Each territory had their own. New York was WWF. Atlanta was the NWA. Uh, Florida had Florida Championship Wrestling. So we did our own kind of territory system throughout New York, though. But we were, um, yeah, I, I, this is the visual aid I use. See this here? This is a real, I don't even know where this gas station is located. Check it out. That, ga that gas station was our base of operations. We call it Amico, ACW, Amico Championship Wrestling, which is pretty funny. And uh, we were a small company. Then uh, we based the uh, one out of Connecticut, Connecticut Wrestling Continental, something like that. I don't remember exactly. Then we had Jersey Pro Wrestling. We made up our own federations to work your way up. And, you know, stars like uh, Tuco Scorpio, Najee McGinnis, and American Dragon, who are also part of the game, will be, uh, those are the guys you move up to. And uh, we would have little tournaments. we go, let's say, if I had um, Brody Lee. You know, that win and you whoever wins the most matches and does really well will get the first pick of the the top tier stars in that territory you have to work your way up you know so basically uh, we were all there together we all had a territory system we'd stay in a little territory we'd storyline a little bit we'd invade another territory i did a bunch of stuff i can't remember every detail i do remember in that amical i don't know like i said i don't know what that amical picture is i remember the uh, amical championship wrestling um the basement had a really beat up wrestling ring and the uh, ropes were made of garden hose. That was my creation. You know, you visualize. I wish I had a picture to show you. I don't. But uh, yeah, the the ropes were made of garden hose. And we wrestled in. There's a crappy ring. And you get hurt and work your way up. And you wrestle a little. We had a BS belt. Just one title. Because there's only like four or five of us playing. So. But eventually, whoever would win, we'd have to go whoever got the most wins. So we'd have a little tournament in Africa Championship Wrestling. And then we'd, we would actually divide. We'd, we held our own uh, pick your poison. Like uh, pick your poison draft or draft lottery where we would split them up into envelopes and oh yeah let's put him here and put them there you know as years went on we collected more cards and i don't know if i have one written down here yeah connecticut acw american championship wrestling was sd jones promotion uh nick bockwinkle ran the one in um, brooklyn and now uh, as you notice all these cards are in black and white but you know years later they actually made them in color and that was great like, this was my favorite like lesser known ethan page with celestia sparks actually not a bad card uh, you don't hear about him. He's an independent wrestler. I believe he's active down in NWA Hollywood, I think, right now. And I saw a few of his matches, you know. Um, with, like I said, all due respect, he's not groundbreaking. That's the card I loved using, you know. Uh, my cousin loved using another guy named Eric Royal, you know. Uh, look, Cedric Alexander, before he became big, you know, this is the Ring of Honor expansion. They also have numerous expansions and federations. <laughs> my cousin, uh, my cousin, she loved using this guy, Juan Francisco de Coronado. Who in the world is that? <laughs> and of course he's a Wi-Fi wrestling is fun that's where he's from so that's the company he's from you know Mike and Maria Canellis right they're in the WWE now this is their Ring of Honor card you know of course everybody's favorite hardcore legend in the first expansion the Sandman the original Legends of Wrestling um I love Sandman I'm a big fan of his but his card wasn't exactly groundbreaking as it were but they released numerous expansions, man. They have, you know, the really, my two favorite expansions are right here. The Ring of Honor expansion, which is awesome. You see Kevin Owens now. You know, Seth Rollins is Tyler Black, the House and Benjamin. There's Maria and Mike Canellas, the Briscoe Brothers, if you're a wrestling fan, Jimmy Jacobs, the American Wolves. This is a really cool expansion. And another expansion is the girls. Like, yo, what about the girls? What's going on? Finally, years and years later, I'm not sure, I think 2016. Yeah. The Shimmer expansion. Shimmer is a really awesome all-female promotion down in uh, Chicago. And it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. And a lot of the Shimmer girls are on WWE now. Bailey was a Shimmer girl. Becky Lynch was a Shimmer girl. You know, um, 
Asuka was a shimmer girl. You know, Shayna Baszler down at NXT, she was a shimmer girl. A lot of them came from that promo. Mia Yim is down at NXT right now, who's awesome. Can excuse me, <laughs> Candice LeRae is an awesome shimmer girl. But yeah, and then, then aside from the expansions, they released limited edition cards. Like right here, I got uh, the man right now, awesome, AJ Styles, limited edition in color. You know, these days they release limited edition cards you'd buy separately. The cool thing is with Phil Single Games, a lot of times you need to order, he'd throw in some freebies, you know? I got a really cool, a lot of cool uh, freebie cards that I expect I get just as a, as a thank you for ordering and, you know, playing my game. Uh, one of the freebies I got is uh, right here, actually. Hangman Adam Page down in AEW, he was a freebie, you know, and it wasn't like a minimum because I asked, is it a minimum order? Nah, you order anything, you get one or two free cards, you know. I got Leo Rush also, who's down in, uh, back in NXT, if I remember correctly, right? So there's a lot to go here, a lot of old school guys. Iron Sheik is here, SD Jones, um, George Daniel Steele, Duggan, you know, like I said, I really can't show you everyone, but you can go online and look at physicalgames.com. But the crown jewel of my collection is this Lunar Edition Macho Man card right here. Who I use and he's really good. And it's been documented with me and the boys and the family. The longest match he had was with the Iron Sheik. The die rolls just weren't going the way we wanted to. And they literally went on forever. And this is a special Macho Man Edition set right here. That came with his father, Angelo Pafo. And his brother, Leaping Lanny Papo, who's a considered a legend, you know, who has a cult following in most uh, inner circles. Yeah, you know, and the game comes with these really, like, small dice right here. And that wasn't the... Uh, if you can get a good view that, that, just look at that small little die. That wasn't going to get the job done. We had to add our own, you know. Because they come in a little envelope box, you know. Like, I show you the Ring of Honor, that's how they come. And it's cool. It worked for a long time, but... You know, you could pretty much pick anybody. We played free mode a lot. We had a lot of fun times at night, you know. Especially when we started drinking, had a lot of fun in the backyard or down here in my dungeon, as it were, my basement. The uh, manor, as some of my friends came to call it, Bandy Manor. Yeah, but uh, Legends of Wrestling is a card game. Oh, yeah, before I even forgot, they also have these uh, really cool uh, situation cards here. View table, into the turnbuckle, into the ropes. So on the cards, sometimes there'll be a letter or a number. Let's see if I can find one for you. Yeah, and then you see a PW. And then C, D, C, chapter D, C, turnbuckle. So, as you can see, uh, there's numbers, there's letters. The letters would be a special situation. And you go to the bottom and read the table. Agility, you know, power, into the turnbuckle, you know, ring. And that's where the situation cards come in. You know, they had, they had a death jump is another one. Uh, DQ, minus five. So, I mean, it, it's not really complicated to play. You just got to roll your die and keep going. And, uh. If your opponent can't counter and there's a number two, number three, you just level up and just keep playing and you wrestle each other. Um, a Macho Man and Sheik, I remember that. Me and my cousin had that match. It lasted maybe a half an hour. I'm not even kidding. And we're sitting there and everybody's like, oh my God, it's still going on. It wasn't boring, you know, because you just kept rolling die. Oh, get him already. Cheat something. But uh, you're not allowed to cheat or go to the futile unless you roll a certain die, a certain number, and so forth, you know. Even over the years, they uh, even got really cool. Like, you got some announcers, Bill Apter, the, he's still around doing his thing. Gary Michael Capetta, old school announcer. I don't know if anybody remembers him. Yeah, like, this video is catered more to the wrestling fans like myself, you know. But you old, everybody, come on. You heard of Macho Man. I'm sure most of you have heard of Harley Race. He's actually a really cool car. He's a really, you know, badass car, but honestly, all these cars, and there's some really cool cards. The, probably the most badass card is the Iron Sheik. Whoever used him would always win. You know, even die rolls are random, but for some reason, whoever used Iron Sheik would win, and he won our titles so many titles, I should say, so many times. For whatever reason, if you use a Sheik, and he's just a basic card, you know, nothing groundbreaking, basic numbers, but for some reason, if you had Iron Sheik, you you you'd win a lot. You'd put the rolls just be there. You know, and the last time we played, he won the world title from the federations. Yeah, the big federation was a BCW Brooklyn Championship Wrestling. That was our big league. Where you had guys like, uh, you know, Nigel McGuinness, really awesome guy who's retired now, down in NXT commentating, you know, Jay Lethal. So we um, we didn't really go. Uh, awesome. Jerry Lynn, one of, Jerry Lynn, probably one of the most underappreciated wrestlers ever, in my opinion. But yeah, you play all these really cool games. It was a lot of fun, and we just did our own thing. You know, you had WWE and, and all that. My cousin loved using this guy, Eric Royal. You know, Eric Royal actually brought up some good luck. Eric Royal, uh, 
gave the Sheik a run for his money a few times in our little federation of Legends of Wrestling brawls, championships, tournaments, whatever. But uh, in the end, the Sheik would always win. You know, another independent guy. And these are some other freebies I got <laughs> for ordering the Ant Colony. <laughs> Green Ant. He's upside down. He's like jumping. Yeah, he's, a, he's a flyer. Combat Ant. Green Ant. Again. So. <laughs> these are some freebies thrown in when you order. Like I said, there was never a minimum. Like, nah, you just order a set and we, we, hook, we hook you up. You know, or whatever. Uh, any wrestling fan knows El Generico? Not a bad card either. Currently known as Sami Zayn in WWE right now. El Generico. Tommaso Ciampa is in... Uh, NXT right now, he's awesome. His card, though, I mean, I look at the numbers on his card. I think he could have, they could have done a little better by him because he's a really awesome wrestler if you follow Tommaso Ciampa. But he won some matches, you know. Wasn't bad. But yeah. Just all color cards from the Ring of Iron expansions, the Shimmer expansions. You know, we had a lot of fun with this game. Um, and I, I spent years, like everything I have, I spent years collecting these. I didn't buy them all in one shot. I started the Legends of Wrestling original set. And I worked my way up. They had rematch, first expansion, you know, Legends Fever, you know, Future Stars that had like Roderick Strong in them in it. Then the Ring of Honor came, the Shimmer came, there's others, NWA, there's Shikara. But uh, yeah, no, it's actually a really fun game. We had a lot of fun playing it. Then you got the special edition cards like the Macho Man I showed you and the AJ Styles I showed you. These were also uh, special editions, were they not? Yeah. <laughs> Morgan Dollar, an old school referee from the indie scene as well. Ah, this is the manager pile here. Bobby Heenan is here. And the manager, the managers actually have wrestling stats. You know, they can either be a manager or wrestle you, which is really cool. You know, Captain Lou Albano. And he was a lot of fun to play with. And of course, DiBiase. We use him as a manager and a wrestler, really old school Teddy DiBiase from the original set, you know, and uh, yeah. Yeah, Legends of Wrestling. Bill Alfonso. The man that calls it right down the middle, if anybody remembers that old thing that went down years ago. <laughs> yeah, this is really cool. There's a lot of known stars here. I guess before I sign off, I know the video's going a little long, but there's a lot. I mean, I can spend hours talking about this game. The girls, you know, of course, Sherry Martell was really good. The girls got on the action. We had our own version of Glow for a little while, you know. But the Shimmer Girls, like uh, Chilito Melissa, heard the title. Courtney Rush, who's currently Rosemary in TNA and on the indie scene as well. Courtney Rush. You know, we put these here. Leva Bates. Right? Yeah, let me get you somebody that uh, you'll recognize. Where is she? I know she's in here somewhere. Ah, I recognize her if you're a wrestling fan. Ah, here she's known as Athena. But right now she's known as Ember Moon. Trained by the man, Booker T, the five-time WCW champion. Ember Moon here is Athena, and she got a really nice uh, move set, really cool cards, and she was pretty lucky too when you played with her. A lot of fun. Mercedes, uh, I don't know why they didn't sign her. She's one of my all-time favorites. Mercedes Martinez is awesome. Still trying to figure out why they didn't sign her, but at least they signed her. Mia Yim currently down at NXT, tearing it up. Mia Yim, awesome, phenomenal, phenomenal wrestler. And the girl that's doing all the damage, Shayna Baszler, the current NXT Women's Champion. She's a nice card, too. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the uh, Shimmer Girls are up here now, and there's a really lot of fun to play with them. And you know, the Shimmer Girls, and you had girls like Sherry, old school girls like Sherry Martel. Um, there is a Moolah card. I didn't pick it up for some reason. I didn't pick it up. Moolah's part of a set that I didn't pick up yet. I don't know, maybe the set, uh, I forgot what it was called. And Because yeah, the women, except for the Shimmer set, the women didn't get their own expansion set. You know, except for Shimmer, you know, they, they were mixed in with Legends Fever, Legends Partner, Sherry is uh, Legends Vintage, right? So, yeah. Uh, we're going on the 20 minute mark here, so it went kind of long, but like I said, I can talk about this game, Legends of Wrestling card game forever.